Hello everyone, welcome back to Stage Manager Supply Co. My name is Claire and today we're going to be talking about basic document template setup. Before we get started, there's a few things I'd like to touch on. Number one, Black Lives Matter. Number two, I am creating these videos and this content on the traditional lands of the Potawatomi, Kickapoo, Peoria, Miami, and Sioux tribes. Number three, the educational videos that I'm producing on this channel, and I hope that you'll follow along and build with me, are a means for anyone to create a free stage management vault of sorts. For instance, today we're going to be creating four base template documents that I use in every production I have ever worked on. If you follow every step with me, you should be able to create these documents for free. However, if you watch this video and think, oh, that looks really difficult, or oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna mess it up, I am gonna put these four documents together in a bundle on my Etsy shop. So 50% of my proceeds that I make on the Etsy shop will be donated directly to the ACLU, which is the American Civil Liberties Union. The other 50% of proceeds will be used to help recoup costs of creating this content, creating this channel, buying equipment. I mean, I have a mic arm now, what's happening? Whichever way you choose, the free instructional video we're about to do, or supporting me and the ACLU by purchasing from my Etsy shop, we're going to arrive at the same destination. Number four, this is my personal, unique, nuanced way of attacking stage management paperwork. I am not saying that this is the right way to do it, and I am not saying that this is the wrong way to do it. It is only my way of doing it. So after you watch this video and see how I like to create my documents, sound off in the comments below and tell me how you would create a base template document. Did I do something that you said, oh my God, why is she doing, why is she doing that? That's the worst way to do it. Or did you see something where you said, Oh my god, I've never even thought of that before. How did she do that? I have to replay that about five times. With all that being said, we're going to get into some base templates. I'm going to do a little computer magical switcheroo and then we'll get started. And we are back. Uh, thank you for being with me. I changed my setup a little bit. So I now have the camera on top of my second monitor, which kind of a flex. First and second, we're going to be working in the Microsoft Office suite with Word and Excel. And third and fourth, we're going to be working in the Apple iWork suite with numbers and pages. The first program that we're going to use is Word. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go down to my Word. I'm going to open up the program and I already have a new document that popped up right away. So what I'm do first thing is going to save this document. So I'll head up to file, save as. For the purposes of this video, we're going to use the stage management supply co production folder. I will be doing a one woman production of August of Sage County where I play every single role. So that's going to be exciting for me long term. So once I've clicked into my folder, I can see that it is completely empty. So the first thing I want to do is go down and hit new folder. I'm going to title this folder templates and hit create. Now within my stage management supply co production folder, I have a template folder. Then you'll have to name the document. Naming convention could be a video all on its own, but for the purposes of this video and your initial team meeting, I would check in with the production manager or a company manager and see if there's a show code that the office or whoever's producing the show is already using for email filtering. That's what I like to use as my show code then for all of my documents and all the emails I send. Let's say for the purposes of this video and my one woman production of August Osage County, that our show code as dictated by the production manager is gonna be SMSCO. I'm gonna call it Word because that's the program I'm using and template. So I'll always know if I search template, I can find it easily. Then I'm gonna click save. 
and voila, we have a bright, beautiful, blank piece of paper. The first thing I like to do when I'm editing a document for formatting is to turn on paragraph markers. That kind of reveals everything that's happening in the document that you can't really see. If you click this button up here, show high paragraph markers, it'll take it away. And if you click it again, it'll bring it up. Next, if you would like to change the margins of your document, now would be the time before you start adding text into the document itself. You can change your margins on the document by clicking on the layout tab of the toolbar, then selecting margins. And as you can see, there are a bunch of pre-programmed type of margins that Word already has set up. Um, I love using narrow because I think it gives a really clean half inch border around the entire page. Um, and as you can see, once I click to narrow, my paragraph marker moved up because the margins had shrunk. Um, something else that I like using in the margins menu is the custom margins. Um, it allows you to kind of tweak them very specifically without just dragging your cursor up and down. So if I wanted the top and the bottom of the page to have a 0.75 inch uh, header and footer margin, I can do that as well. Um, but you can do whatever you like. If you have a lot of info, I would make the margins pretty narrow. And if you have a little bit of info, but you wanna make the page look nicer, I would make your margins larger. But what I'm gonna do for this document is just use normal margins and keep things simple. The four main components of each document that we're gonna build today include the show logo, the show title, the page numbers, and the date. We'll be putting these four components into the document in two specific places. First, we have our header, and then at the bottom of the document, we have our footer. Something that I love doing specifically, and this may be unique to just me as a stage manager, and I am not saying it's the right thing to do in a header of a document, but I have found great success doing it, is to insert tables into your header and footer to maintain consistent formatting. Here's what I mean. If I want to type in I'm going to put my logo in the top left corner and I tab over to put my document title, document title. What scares me about this and what I have been burned before with this document is this space right here. I call it the goofy space because there's lots of room for something to goof up in there. Um, so to mitigate that, I like to insert a table. You can insert a table into your header by following these steps. You click the insert tab of the menu bar and then right below it you'll see table and then you'll get a big square with all the different options of how many tables you can put in. I like to either do two by one or three by one. If I'm going to have more than two components in the header of the document, I'll put three. But right now I know that for this document, I'm only going to have the logo and the document title. So I'll insert two by one and boom, we have a table. I don't know if you clocked this, but this paragraph marker was bumped down a line when I inserted the table. So to make sure it doesn't mess up my formatting too much, I'm gonna highlight this paragraph marker and I'm gonna make it font size six. It just makes sure that if my header gets larger than our anticipated space that we've given it, it won't push everything down in the actual document by another paragraph line. And you can make this any size you want. I've made it size one, or I've made it intentionally very large to give a nice white line before we get into the meat of our document. Also, I'm really glad that we inserted our table after we adjusted the margins, because if you insert the table before adjusting the margins, um, let me just tab over and show you. When I go to narrow from here, my table isn't perfectly auto-sized to the width of the document. So that's why I just recommend doing margins first so you know what you're working with. So now I wanna work on the formatting of my table. I'm gonna click into the header and I'm either gonna hit this square at the top of the table or I'll select both of the cells to select the whole table. Then in the menu bar, you'll see the table design and table design layout tabs. Those are gonna be your main spots to adjust your table. The first thing I like to do and make sure is turned on when I'm working with tables is view grid lines, which can be found under the layout tab in the menu toolbar and going over to view grid lines. This will be extremely helpful in about one second. Then I'm gonna click the table design tab from the toolbar, go over to borders and select no borders. Now my table won't print with big black boxes around it, 
but because I turned on view grid lines, I can still see the parameters that I'm working within. Now, let's put our logo into this document. For that, you're gonna need a PNG or JPEG file of your show's logo. If your company hasn't given you a logo or you don't have any branding or it's a new work, um, it is super easy to create your own logo or find a logo off the internet. Um, if you wanna create your own logo, you can type right into this Word document. I like to turn off my paragraph markers. Let's find a fun font. You can type that right into your header and that can be the logo. You can take a screenshot of it by holding down Command Shift 3 um, and use that as your logo. It's super easy to find a logo online. You can go to an internet exploring option and type in, let's do August Osage County because that is the one woman show I will be performing. And you can see a bunch of amazing graphic designers have created thousands, I'm sure, of August Osage County logos. Um, I would prefer if you're going to pick a logo for yourself, something that's not going to be a huge ink drain on your computer and also will look good if you print it out black and white because we don't always have the luxury of printing in color. So for me, I think this would be a great logo because it's one color. Um, I also, this one is just black and white and it looks to be transparent. So you can pick whatever. However, I already have a logo pre-made um, that I was given to me by my company. I'm gonna open up my show folder and here is my logo that is just sitting on my desktop. So in my show folder, I'm gonna create a new folder and call it branding. And then I'm gonna click and drag my logo into my branding folder so I always know where it is and I can use it for the rest of my documents. Now that we have our logo in the branding folder, I'm gonna copy and paste it into our document by selecting it, copying, and then clicking into the leftmost cell, which is where I typically put logos on documents, and pasting. You can also click and drag the file out of the folder itself. And as you can see, the logo is way too big. It's going to take up like a third of the page, and that is not advantageous to creating paperwork. What I can do to mitigate this is click onto the logo picture itself. And as you can see, we get all eight of our little click and drag uh, corners. So you can resize the image by clicking and dragging to your preferred height. Um, but what I personally like to do, because I, um, I enjoy getting really precise measurements, is I'm going to click the picture format tab on the toolbar. And as you can see, there's a height and width option on the far right. So I like to make my logo somewhere between half an inch to three quarters of an inch tall. So I'm going to do 0.5 for my height and 0.5 for my width. That's a little small. So let's try 0.75. That looks great. The other thing that I want to mention at this uh, height and width area is that there's this little check mark next to the height and width. This is so that you can lock your aspect ratio. If you unclick this uh, check mark and then adjust the height to be, let's say, 0.9 inches, it's going to uh, make the image look wonky because it's pulling down the height while not adjusting the width. So I like to keep that checked. Now we're gonna move on to our next component of the document, which is going to be our document title and document subtitle. You can do this by clicking into your rightmost header tile. So I'm gonna right adjust my cell because I like when um, content is bordering the margins. I think that looks really nice. And I'm gonna type in document title. My preferred font is Arial. I support any font that you want to use at any time. I just uh, would say know your audience, and if you're going to distribute something to a group of people, Comic Sans may not be the best choice, but it also may be the best choice, so think wisely. So now I'm just going to adjust my document title a little more, and then I'm going to add a document subtitle. Maybe you are going to be doing multiples of one document, so let's say you're going to be distributing costume tracking to each character individually. You could keep your document title as costume tracking, but change your subtitle for each character's individual character name. If you want to play around with your fonts here further and get fancier, you can do that by selecting the text that you would like to adjust. 
and then uh, clicking format in the menu bar and font and then you get brought to a bigger font menu which has strike through options, small caps, all caps, superscript, subscript, uh, where you can really play around with your font even further. Um, there's also some advanced ligature stuff that we can get into in a later video, but that's where you'll find all of these options. Now that we have the header all set, I'm going to scroll down to the footer of the document. I'm going to double click into the footer and we're going to insert another table into the footer. I'm going to insert a three by one table this time though, because I find that I usually have more to say in the footer of a document than I do in a header. So again, we'll go up to insert table and then we'll click a three by one table this time. And voila, we have another table. Again, you see we have another pesky paragraph marker here that's not allowing the table to go all the way to the bottom of the footer. So for a footer pesky paragraph marker, I'm gonna change the font to one, and that makes the footer lie very nicely at the bottom of the page. Next, I'm gonna repeat the steps we did earlier of highlighting the whole table by either selecting all the cells or clicking this uh, lovely box in the corner. I'm gonna go up to my table design and then I'm gonna select borders, no borders. And because we already turned our view grid lines on, we can still see what we're working with. Now for the next two components, we're gonna be using kind of an advanced word technique that I have found along the way that works really well for me. I find that when I do insert page numbers for Word, I don't have as much control as I would like over where the page numbers go, if I can actually put them in the document itself, and it just gets me angry. Do you ever get angry? Do you ever get mad when you're creating a piece of paperwork? It's the worst. What do you do when you're angry? What do you do with the mad that you feel? Anyway, I will use fields to make sure that my date and my page numbers are as modifiable as possible. Here's what I mean. You're gonna click into your leftmost cell of your table at the bottom of your footer. I like to put in my date or my page numbers here, it doesn't matter, right now we'll do date. So I'm gonna go up to my menu bar and click insert. As you can see, we've got a page numbers option, date and time, we're gonna ignore those. We're gonna click field. Once I've chosen field, we have a huge menu of options of things that we can put into the document. We're gonna go to field names and we're gonna scroll down. Let's say we're gonna put the date in the leftmost cell of the footer, select date. Also, when you get really good and you start remembering codes, you can just type in date here and they'll insert that already for you. And then I will select okay. And voila, the date is in there. Then we'll do the same thing for our page numbers. Um, I'm gonna click into the right cell of my footer. I'm going to right align the cell. Then I'm gonna type in the word page. I enjoy giving a lead to my page numbers, but that's your personal preference. If you wanna do one of one, I support you. If you wanna do page one of one, that's also great. Once we have page typed in, then we're gonna go to insert field once again. And we're gonna scroll down to page and hit okay. Now we have our page number. And if you would wanna put the number of pages that there are in the document, you can hit space, type of, go to insert, field, and then scroll down to num pages. And now we have page one of one. Now that you have your page numbers into the document, the last cell that you have open in the footer is your third MISC bonus cell. Um, I like to put a variety of different things in here. If I'm doing a show for a company, sometimes I'll put the company's logo down there in addition to the show logo. If I'm working on a contact sheet and there's confidential information in the document, I'll put do not distribute at the bottom. Or if I'm working on a schedule that isn't set in stone, I'll write subject to change. In addition, if I'm working on a document that's really specific to me and I'm asking for people to return changes to me at the end of the night, I'll always put my name, my position, and my contact information, either my cell or my email, at the bottom just so people know where to return changes to. And sometimes I'll even type in the very top of the document, return changes to Claire at end of night. The world is your oyster. We have this template now and you can do whatever you want with it. So this is the template. 
this is it. It's super simple, but it is the stuff that will take you five minutes every time to just do once and do it right once it will be such a relief for you and your team moving forward through a process. I'm going to save by Apple Sing or File Save, and then I'm going to close the document up. And that's our first template. So when you go into your template folder, we have our SMS Co Word template. Now let's do the same thing for pages. There are a lot of similarities between Word and Pages, so I'm gonna move through this process a little bit quicker. But if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or shoot me an email. So I'm gonna open up Pages and I'm gonna select New Document. It'll bring me to a template screen. I'm gonna select blank and I have a blank template for pages. First thing I'm gonna do, just like last time, is file, save. And then a trick that I like to use is if I'm gonna retitle something, pretty much the same thing as another file, is I'll click the file that already has a name in there so it makes the save as name that name. So I have my show code here. I have word template, but this is gonna be our pages template. So I'll just change word to pages and I'll click save. Something that I enjoy about pages that Word doesn't have is this pre-built-in table-esque header. It keeps your header really clean and really consistent and doesn't allow for that goofy space for formatting to get all messed up in. So let's do the same thing that we did last time. I'm gonna go into my branding folder of my show folder. I'm gonna select the company logo, copy it, and then I'm gonna click into the leftmost cell of my header and paste. As you can see, there's a, in pages, they use an inspector type uh, application on the right, and there's a format button and a document button. I tend to use the format button a lot when I'm working with pictures. Um, there's a style option, an image option, and an arrange option. So as you can see, the next step that I did in Word was to adjust my image size and under a range we can do the same thing here. I think I made it three quarters of an inch last time. Boom, three quarters of an inch once again. Um, by clicking constrain proportions, that means that our aspect ratio is going to remain intact the same way that we had it in Word. So now I can click into the rightmost cell and add my document title and my subtitle. So I'm gonna do that really quick and then I'll be right back. So now we have pretty much the same header that we created in Word. So let's move on to the footer and put our date and page numbers in there. Something that I also like about pages a lot more than Word is that their inserting page numbers and inserting the date function works really, really well. So as you can see, and you probably saw in the header, it is consistently asking me if I want to insert the page numbers. I don't yet because I'm going to put the date in, but we will use that button later. So to insert the date, I'm going to go up to the menu bar, select insert date and time. And as you can see, the date in pages is long form, which is not really ideal for what our purposes are. So I'm going to double click the date and oh my gosh, wow, a fun little date format popped up. So I'm going to select the short form date that we used on our word template. Something that I will say about all four applications that we're using today is that when you use the insert date function, you are usually going to be inserting a date that auto updates every time that you open the document. So if you don't want a document to change its date every time you open it, I would just hard manually enter the date into a footer and make it part of your daily routine when you edit that document to update the date. Now we're gonna insert our last component, which is the page numbers, and we can finally press the button that I feel like Pages has been begging us to press of insert page numbers. If you don't see an option that tickles your fancy, you can select any of the page options. So I'll do page one of one, and you can delete the extra page and of, and if you enjoy the slash, you can manually put that in. The numbers will still auto populate based on how much content you have in the document. I'm gonna save and then I'm gonna exit out. Now in our templates folder, we have a Word template and we have a Pages template. Let's move on to spreadsheets. Let's start by using Excel. I'm gonna open up the program and now I have a blank book. We're gonna do pretty much the same process as our Word and Pages template, but there's gonna be a couple different tweaks of how we get to our end result. The first step that we're always gonna do is save our document. So I'm gonna go up to File and hit Save 
I'm gonna click the Word template one because I know that all I need to do to save this is change it to Excel. I'll hit save. And now we have a saved file. With an Excel spreadsheet, there's two different ways that I tend to look at a spreadsheet. When I'm doing a run sheet or a cue sheet or something that's really intense with a lot of filters, I like to look at it in this spreadsheet view that doesn't have any of the formatting because then I can look at more of the data without any page breaks or without any extra fluff. We are trying to make a template to be printed and to be PDF'd. So I do want to see all of the margins and the headers and the footers. So to view my margins and my header, I'm going to select the view tab of the toolbar and then I'm going to select the page layout button, which now we can see what our Excel document is going to look like page by page if we were to print it out. Next, we're going to adjust our margins. To do that, we're going to select the page layout tab from the toolbar. Then we're going to go down and select margins. Um, I'm going to go right into custom margins on this one because there is a center on page option, which I love using for Excel. If you're not sure how wide your columns are going to be when you start creating your spreadsheet, I like to use the center on page horizontally option because that way, even if some of your columns are wider or larger, it will always look like the document is centered on the page. While we're here on the margins pop-up, we can see that there's not actually a one-inch border around the page right now. I don't know if this is because I've messed with my Excel settings or this is what the base program Excel has, but I'm just gonna quickly change my top, my right, my bottom, and my left to be all one inch around. I've horizontally centered my page, and now I'm gonna click OK. Now I have a really nice centered looking page. Now we're gonna go in and add our four main components to the document. We'll start with the logo. So when I move my cursor over the header, I see that Excel also uses the three cell header as pages did and as we kind of tricked in Word by inserting the table. So I'm gonna click into my leftmost cell. Then I'm gonna move over in the menu bar and select header and footer. Then I'm gonna go down and select picture and then select our company logo. Next thing we're going to do in that same header and footer menu bar is select format picture, which for me brings up this beautiful sidebar. As you can see, we have another lock aspect ratio option, which we're going to keep. I'm going to change my width and my height to be about 0.75. Then once I feel like I'm all good with my picture, I can click out and the picture fits. However, I do see that this first cell is overlapping the picture a little bit, which is a little bit concerning to me. And I really don't want that because I want that to be a header cell or I wanna use that cell in the actual spreadsheet. So I can click and drag over here by the ruler to make sure it goes a little lower. Our second step and component is inserting the document title and subtitle. So I'll do that really quickly and get all my fonts adjusted. Something I will say about Excel is that if you want to adjust the font further like we were doing in Word, you can select format cells, shortcut Apple one, and you get brought to a bigger font menu. I don't wanna do anything with it right now, but that's where it is if you need it. We have two out of four of our components done. I'm scrolling down and we're gonna add the footer. I'm gonna click into the leftmost cell where I wanna put the date. Then I'm gonna click the header and footer tab. So I'm gonna select current date. And then when I click out of the footer, there's my date. Then I'm gonna go over to the rightmost cell in the footer. I'm gonna click in and then I'm going to type page and then I'll select the page number from the toolbar. Then I'll type of with a couple of spaces and insert number of pages. And then when I click out of the footer, you can see that there is the pound sign of zero. That's because we currently have no content in the actual table. So if I were to type in my name and we scroll back down to the footer, now we see it's page one of one. And that's how we create the Excel file. So all we're gonna do now is save and close out of the program. Now we're gonna move on to our last program, which is iWorks Numbers. Numbers is the trickiest document to make look uniform just because it's hard to get a logo image into the header of the document. I have found a workaround that I'm gonna share with you, but I would highly suggest using Excel over Numbers 
any day of the week. However, if that's what your computer has and you don't have the means to purchase Microsoft Office, we can totally make this work. Do not sweat it. So I'm gonna open up my numbers application and it will bring me to the same screen of where I wanna select my new document. So I'm gonna put us in to our templates folder and select new document. It'll bring me to a choose template. I'm gonna choose the blank and hit create. The first thing I do when I create a numbers document is save it. So I'm gonna save and we know our naming conventions right now. I don't need to explain it to you again, but I'm doing it and done. Second thing I do is always delete this inserted table. I select the circle at the top right and I hit delete. Now I'm gonna insert a table of my choosing by either hitting this table icon in the toolbar or selecting insert table. And then I like plain because I think it's the cleanest and it has the least amount of formatting. As you can see, this table has a title in it, which I'm not super thrilled about. So I'm gonna move my cursor over to the rows and then I'm gonna select the cell above one and I'm gonna right click and then select hide table title. And now we just have kind of more what we were seeing in Excel, which is blank cells, which is A plus to me. Um, I'm gonna add a couple more rows really quickly by just selecting a bunch and hitting add rows below. Now we have a longer spreadsheet. Before we do anything else with this spreadsheet, I do want to make a header row. So I'm gonna click into the one row, right click on the number one, and then in the drop down menu, there's a convert to header row option. I'm gonna select that. And now this row will be repeated on every page of the document that you print. This is ultimately where we're gonna put our logo, our document title, and our subtitle. So I'm gonna select this whole row, then I'm gonna go over to cell in the formatting bar and select no fill so that they are just white empty cells. And then I want to put in my logo into the leftmost cell. And then I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Another interesting challenge that Numbers presents is that you cannot adjust the size of a logo within a cell. It only scales to fit, as you can see down here. So I try to always adjust my first column in a Numbers spreadsheet to be about the width of the logo. After I have the logo the way I want it, I'm gonna put in my document title again. As you can see, I did a little formatting. Um, and now I'm gonna get rid of this black line at the bottom of of the first row. I'm gonna accomplish this by selecting the entire first row, then I'm gonna click cell, and I'm gonna drop down to border styles, and I'm gonna use this 0.35 style that we already have. That's gonna make the light gray border that we see throughout the rest of our document apply to the bottom line of the first row. Now, this is where numbers becomes a little different. To access our footer, we're actually gonna go file print and we're gonna go to the print screen because that is where you can edit the footer and the header built into numbers. So as you can see, I have my document title, document subtitle, um, and the table looks really small, which we're gonna address in a little bit. First, I'm gonna go into the footer and I'm gonna add my date and then I'm gonna add my page numbers. As you can see in the center cell, there's already a page number in there, which I'm just gonna delete and move over in a second, but we'll do date first for consistency sake. I clicked into the leftmost cell of the footer, then I'm gonna hit insert and we'll do date and time. As we did in pages, I'm gonna double click and select the short form of the date and click out of the cell. Then I'm gonna click over to the rightmost cell of my footer and I'm gonna insert page numbers. But as you can see in the numbers world, we have a page numbers option and a page count option, which is different to pages that just had four different options of how you could insert your page numbers. So I'm gonna go back down into here and I'm gonna type page, then I'm gonna insert my page number, then I'll type of with two spaces, then I'll insert page count. And so now we have page one of one. We have our header, which is a little wonky still though, so let's address that next. Once I click out of the footer, I will see on the right side, there'll be the print setup option. And I'm gonna adjust my content scale a little bit larger until we go on to 
one page. I can also hit fit, which will automatically adjust the spreadsheet to fit the page. However, I find that by manually adjusting, you can get the spreadsheet to take up as much of the page as you would like. This is also where you can adjust the margins of your page down in the page margins section. But once again, this is where I kind of really think Excel beats numbers because once again, you see this point system and it's very hard to kind of adjust and understand what you're looking for in the document when in my mind, it's easier to picture, okay, I want a half inch border around my page. I'm gonna type in 0.5 inches and then boom, it does exactly that. So now you are basically all done. You have a great base numbers template that you can use for the rest of your productions. What I'm gonna do to close out is select done and then I'm gonna save really quick and then I can quit out of the program. Congratulations! You should now have your four base template documents that you can build your entire production's paperwork off of. Overall, I would say I primarily rely on Word and Excel to create my paperwork for shows. I have done shows using iWorks numbers and pages, but growing up using Microsoft Office, I feel that it's a little bit more intuitive for me individually. Whenever you now need to create a new piece of paperwork for your productions, you can use your template. Do this by going into your template folder, copying the template of the application of your choosing, and pasting a copy of the template into a folder of your choosing. And now I'm ready to go in and edit this template, change the header, change the footer, and create a contact sheet, which we're going to be doing next week in our instructional video. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of creating base templates. If you have any thoughts, feelings, opinions, comment down below. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, make sure to hit the button down below, as well as ring the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you again for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.